Episode 133 of the Read to Lead podcast is brought to you by FreshBooks, offering a month of unrestricted use completely free, and you don't need a credit card for the trial. To claim your free month, go to freshbooks.com slash read to lead and enter read to lead in the how did you hear about us section. There's not a leader out there that doesn't want to be successful, and there's not a leader out there that wants to be unpopular. So which of those fears drive you the most? Coming to an understanding about that is something that is absolutely required to be an effective leader. Welcome to the Read to Lead podcast with Jeff Brown. Jeff believes that if you desire to achieve true success in business and in life, then consistent and intentional reading is a must. The Read to Lead podcast will not only help you narrow this ever important reading list, but also bring you key insights and valuable feedback from some of today's most successful and inspiring authors. And now here's Jeff. Hello and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. You found the podcast that is dedicated to your personal and your professional growth. We talk about leadership, of course, and also things like personal development, productivity, sales, career, business, marketing, entrepreneurship, and a lot more. In just a few minutes, you and I are going to sit down with J.V. Venable. He is the author of Breaking the Trust Barrier, How Leaders Close the Gaps for High Performance. J.V. has a military background. More about that in a moment. But I'll be asking him, among other things, about how he responds to those who suggest leading in the military and inside a company can't be easily compared. I'll ask about the concept of drafting and how we can effectively close the gaps within our organizations. The key components of developing commitment, loyalty, and trust, and much, much more. I mentioned at the end of last episode that I wanted to begin experimenting with answering listener questions or a listener question at the end of future episodes. So today's episode is the first time we're going to tackle that, and that will be at the end. So be sure to stick around for that. We've got a great question from a listener. And I'll also have details at that time as to how you can get your question on the Read to Lead podcast. All of that happens after our conversation with JV. I just received today a check in the mail from a client, a client who sends me a check each and every month. And one of the great things about that arrangement is I set it up one time inside cloud accounting software FreshBooks, and then I don't have to think about it anymore. FreshBooks automatically every month sends out a new invoice, and that check comes to me without me having to lift a finger And that's just one of many reasons I love FreshBooks so much. They're sponsoring this episode. And as you heard me say a moment ago, they're offering a month of unrestricted use, completely free. You get access to all of FreshBooks features, costs you nothing, and you don't even need a credit card to sign up for this trial. It all starts with invoicing, of course, but FreshBooks has so many other features as well to help keep you organized and streamline the business side of what you do. Whether that's keeping track of expenses, using their mobile app to take pictures of your receipts so you don't forget, tracking your cash flow, even tracking your time, whatever the financial needs of your business are, I'm confident that FreshBooks cloud accounting software can handle them with ease like they've been doing for me for over seven years. If you want to take advantage of this free month-long trial like so many others have, all you need to do to claim your free month is go to freshbooks.com slash read to lead and be sure to enter read to lead in the how did you hear about us section again that's simply freshbooks.com slash read to lead jv venable is a graduate of the united states air force's fighter weapons school and has flown fighter aircraft all over the world he has led individuals teams and organizations as large as 1100 people at the highest ends of performance and risk in both peacetime and combat including serving as the commander and demonstration leader of the United States Air Force's jet demonstration team, the Thunderbirds. He is an inspirational speaker, seminar leader, and coach on building high-performance teams. And we're going to be chatting with him today about his new book. It is called Breaking the Trust Barrier, How Leaders Close the Gaps for High Performance. I'm excited to have him. JV, welcome officially to the Read to Lead podcast. Jeff, thank you for, for the opportunity. Well, as I read the book, it it's, it seemed uh, pretty obvious to me and straightforward how leading in the military relates so well to, to leading in, in the business world and in organizations. But I'd be curious to know, JV, if you ever run into skeptics, do you ever have somebody that says, well, that's all well and good, but leading in the military is not the same as leading in my world? And if so, what do you typically say to those folks? 
Yeah, and Jeff, it's what we hear as military folks all the time. Oh, well, leading in the military is different. Um, I, I, I would beg to differ with that wholeheartedly. Mm. You're given the authority to lead teams by, you know, a couple of different ways. Your position, legal authorities, the police and, uh, and the judges are all given those legal authorities. And then there's this thing called charisma that we all have the ability to develop and further and make people want, compel them to want to follow us out of their own desires. You sit down and look at each one of these facets and they're alive in the military just like they are anywhere else. We live right now in an age where people have greater judgment and, and they're more thoughtful than they've ever been in any other era. And that, that is any level, any tier in an organization, getting people to move out of their comfort zones, out of the places where they're very, very good at what they do and move in a different direction is just as challenging for your organization as it is for the military. And in order to get them to move, even in combat, to do what your team needs them to do, it depends on much more than your authority. It depends on their belief, their faith, their trust in you. And that's what this book is all about. Mm. Well, his peers consider him to be a born leader, but the question, can a born leader teach you to lead others is one that is posed in the book's forward. And so, JV, most people born with certain skills often struggle to teach those skills in part because they're so innate. So that begs the question, what makes you the exception? Jeff, there are many people out there who are enamored with the dynamics associated with leading people. It, it's something they and, and I certainly think about all the time. Uh, over the course of my years on the point, I stumbled across a process of, uh, of leading people that makes it easy, makes it something that you can see or visualize. Mm. Um, and you can actually forecast the effects of your actions on your people before you put them in play. That process is called drafting. When you teach it to your people, they'll see drafting everywhere they look, just like I do now. I see it uh, in birds uh, migrating south uh, for the winter, um, uh, NASCAR. I see uh, bicyclists uh, drafting off of each other. And every time I, I see it, I begin to think about my effects on the people around me and my team. And it makes me a better leader. I think uh, the folks that uh, pick up the book and, uh, and read it will uh, feel the same way. Well, related to drafting, uh, share a bit, if you would, about what it means to, to close the gaps as, as leaders. Why is that so important? Yeah, drafting um, was stumbled on in the 1950s by a bunch of knuckleheaded stock car racers, <laughs> uh, people just like, like me. And, and, and what they figured out was two cars running close together, nose to tail, could actually sustain a speed that was faster than either car could achieve on its own, even, even momentarily. Mm. And as they experimented, they figured out that the effect came from that lead car taking on the wall of air, of air for both cars and the trailer being close enough to the leader's bumper to take the drag off of its car and shift it to the bumper of its own. That allowed both cars to speed down the track at a speed that, well, again, that uh, was, uh, was faster than either car could go on its own. Over time, you know, this is one of those things that they figured out that drafting is mutually beneficial. It helps both the leader and the trailer achieve the speed, but it's a little bit lopsided, at least at first. As that, as that lead car plows down the, the track, it creates a, a wall, a path through the wall of air that a trailer can take advantage of when it's actually several cars behind the leader's bumper. And as that, le that trailer closes on the leader's bumper, that, that pull, that, that free space of air gets more and more clear, allowing it to accelerate. But not until that trail car is snuggled up against the bumper of the leader. When he, he's within one car length, does that that drag begins to shift from his car to the, the trail of, of the uh, trailer. Our job as leaders is to figure out how we can entice our people to close the gaps. We can't make them close, but it's us up to us to set the dynamics that make them want to. Well, what are some ways that we can do that then? Help us unpack that, that metaphor for organizations and teams. Yeah, absolutely. The first thing that people will look for when they step in your organization, Jeff, is, is your commitment to them and how they see commitments a couple of different ways. No matter what your profession is or how you think each person is coming in completely fit to, to, uh, to handle the technical faculties that they'll be required to, to, to do on your team, 
there are certain things that you need to spin them up on. Um, there, there are um, uh, uh, methods and methodologies, just uh, basically the uh, day-to-day routine that you have in your organizations. Then the intricacies, if you begin to think about it, are absolutely there. Certainly was true on the, the Thunderbirds. I mean, mm-hmm. guys on our team uh, coming in to fly on my wing had never flown demonstration aerobatics before in their lives. And getting them to move from you know where we were normally in our day-to-day operational lives, uh, three feet away, and to slowly close the gap. First, to commit to that that path is the first uh, first thing that we wanted to do, and then we could hold them at three feet and get their commitment there. But then, as we brought them into two feet, and then ultimately to eighteen inches, we developed the next levels, which are loyalty and trust. Mm. Well, what would you say, JV, speaking of loyalty, let's, let's, let's hone in on that for just a second. What is a key component uh, to deepening and developing a loyalty among team members especially? Jeff, I, I think the, the biggest piece of loyalty uh, comes when your people realize that you will go the distance for them even when they may not be able to respond in kind. Um, how you can do that on any team is by finding out what the passions are in these people's lives. Mm. Passions come in one of several different areas, and we as professionals think that they're going to be passionate primarily about their job, just like we are, but <laughs> they may be very good at it, but their passions may lie in their faith, their family, their friends, their health, or the job area. And by spending time with them, getting to genuinely know them, you'll hear those passions start to come out. And if you can further their efforts, if you can further their closure on those passions, you'll gain their lifelong loyalty. Mm. Well, then there's there's trust. You mentioned that, too. How, How can we close the gaps there? What are some specific ways that we can can narrow those gaps, say, in the areas of, of integrity and, and principles and empowerment, the things you talk about in the book? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you, the one thing I'll tell you about trust is it cannot come without your commitment and loyalty and time in those two areas. People over the course of their lives, you and I have developed these biases. Somebody wronged us in some way when we were growing up or our families taught us to see people in certain lights. And Mm. every time you see a little bit of inkling of those traits in somebody that you meet, that bias comes to life. It may not be conscious, Mm. but it's absolutely there. And these perceptions, that feeling that I just don't trust him, or there's something about him that makes me uncomfortable, that's a bias lying in that person's mind. And we we can't figure out uh, those biases are what they are in leaders. Our job is to create new coding in their mind that will allow them to build that trust in us. That comes through your commitment and then building in loyalty. And over time, they'll close to a point where, Jeff, they can see your every move and your every thought. And that's when your principles, your integrity will come to bear. If you've got those established and and you live them every day, They're going to continue to move into trust. They will be drawn in it just like you would hope they would be. And once you have them in that spot, the way you can solidify it for life, again, is by empowering them in ways that will take the weight off of your car. You give them tasks. And while you can you can give them the responsibility for, for, for fulfilling those tasks, you owe them several other things. You, you owe them your insights, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, money and other faculties they'll need to make it happen, the resources mm-hmm. and guidance along the way. Show them the bounds. Once you build this, uh, this thought process, you will feel a surge of energy like nothing else as they come up and snuggle against your, your jet like they did in the Thunder. Well, I want to ask a couple of questions, JV, not directly related to the book. Uh, but before I do that, uh, is there anything else from the book you want to make sure we walk away with? Yeah, I, Jeff, I, I would say that it's the acknowledgement that leading people is uh, at times a hard and a, and a lonely job. Mm. And we have to come to terms with that, one, up front. But, but two, we have to figure out what's driving us, our internal selves. What do we value the most? You know, as leaders, there's success, and there's not a leader out there that doesn't want to be successful, and there's not a leader out there that wants to be unpopular. Mm-hmm. But which of those fears drive you the most? 
coming to an understanding about that in yourself is something that is absolutely required to be an effective leader because no matter how much of a of a Mr. Rogers or a tyrant in either side of that scale you may think you are, you need to find your center point and you need to be able to lean in a one direction or another in order to maximize the performance of your team. And the methodology of doing that and the thoughts that will bring that to, to life in your own mind are embedded in this book. Mm, well said. Well said. Well, I know you do quite a bit of uh, public speaking, and I'd uh, love to hear from you, JV, if you're willing to share some of your best tips when it comes to delivering an, an impactful and, and memorable public talk. It's something that uh, those who listen to this show put a lot, of, uh, a lot of value in, and it would be very helpful if we could hear from you in that, in that regard. Jeff, uh, it's one of my favorite topics, and and the thing that that makes people move faster and better than anything else are the passions that they feel, Mm -hmm. and bringing those passions to life in a room is predicated on you pulling out those passions out of yourself, and the Mm -hmm. way you get people leaning forward in their seats is the same thought process, the same concept as this drafting idea. You pull them towards you out of the want to know more, and that want comes from the passion in your voice and in your chest. I love pulling that out of me. My my, uh, uh, presentations are emotional roller coasters, (laughs) and what I want to... what I want at the end of that uh, that session is for people to feel the surge, the power that I do in this incredible concept of drafting. Well, I always like to find out what books guests are reading or what books uh, have impacted them throughout their lives. So if you can, uh, I'd love for you to name for us a couple of books. Maybe they're ones that you go back to again and again, the ones that have, have truly had the, the biggest impact on you over the years. Jeff, I've got a couple that are my favorites. Um, as far as leadership books go, there's two that are right in the wheelhouse. There's a book called Teamwork by uh, Carl Larson and, and uh, a gentleman named LaFasto. Mm. And it's a very well-written book that uses examples from other organizations and how you go to build high-performing teams. Another one is uh, John Cotter's book, uh, Leading Change. Mm. You know, both of these guys explore other organizations and other people's techniques and build them into an extraordinary, I think, an extraordinary package. Uh, but I also get as much out of biographies as I do anything else, particularly mm. m- men and women who are under stress. And the two that I go back and I reread all the time are um, there's a book called um, Seven Came Through by Eddie Rickenbacker. He was lost at sea for 24 days, and it's the story of how he brought seven people through that horrible situation. Mm. They lived longer than anybody else ever had on the open ocean, and he did it. In, uh, and, and once you read this book, uh, my book, um, Breaking the Trust Barrier, you'll see every facet of that in a different light. The second one is uh, just about anything about the Shackleton uh, adventure to, uh, to the South. His book, uh, South, a story of the endurance is a great one. And, and uh, to see the highs and lows and the stresses that man was under and his entire crew was under uh, for, mm. for so long in the Arctic, they were lost. And, and uh, he pulled every man, I think it was 28, went on the ice. And a year and a half later, they all survived in, in an incredible situation. And in any one of the books, Jeff, you never hear a peep about uh, a morale issue or uh, the uprising of a mutiny that you would expect in any other way. He did that by building some extraordinary levels of commitment and loyalty out of his people. Mm. Well, great suggestions. I don't think any of those have ever been mentioned before. So so thank you for that. Absolutely. Well, what's uh, next uh, for you, JV? I know the book has only been out for a few weeks, but I'd be curious to know what you and your team are working on now that, that you're excited about. Jeff, I'm, uh, I constantly think about leading and leadership, and this, this is the reason I wrote the book. It's a passion of mine, and what I want to do is develop the next generation of leaders. I want to make people want to be leaders, see the, the, the fidelity and the highs and lows and how to handle all of that through a process they can visualize every day 
as they step into the organization. Mm. And this is uh, getting that message out through this book, Breaking the Trust Barrier, is the first step in that. I'm, I'm uh, now working on my second book, and it's called Drafting, Following One to Lead Another, and it's about building followers and followership. And I think people will find that uh, at least as rewarding a read as this one is. Well, I don't know what the release schedule is for that, but uh, we'll have to uh, look into having you back on the show when that book comes out. I'd love to, love to come back, Joe. Awesome, awesome. Well, the book, again, is Breaking the Trust Barrier, How Leaders Close the Gaps for High Performance by J.V. Venable. Uh, it's a treat to talk to you today, sir. Thank you so much for, for sharing your experiences with us and more about the book. Uh, we really appreciate it. Jeff, a great pleasure. Thank you for having me. To find out more about JV, how to connect with him, the links and resources he mentioned, and a link to purchase his brand new book, just visit the show notes page created especially for this episode. It's at readtoleadpodcast.com slash 133 for episode 133. It's time now for our featured listener question. If you have a question for me about any of the topics we discuss here on the show or anything having to do with reading, even podcasting, there are a couple of ways you can forward to me your question. Of course, one obvious way is via email, jeff at readtoleadpodcast.com. Be sure and include your full name and your web address if you'd like that to be included as well. You can also leave a voicemail, and I love including those on the show, by going to readtoleadpodcast.com slash question. It works best from a desktop computer. If you use your mobile device, you'll need to download a special app. But otherwise, go to readtoleadpodcast.com slash question from your desktop, and right from there, you can leave me a voicemail version of your question. And no need to worry. If you mess up, you can stop and start over. Again, be sure and state your name and your web address if you'd like to include that, followed by your question. Today's question comes from Rob. Hey, Jeff. This is Rob Lott from Orlando, Florida. I blog on theater, creativity, and the art of leadership at robalott.wordpress.com. I am currently taking my team through some of the classic leadership and business books by authors like Jim Collins and Patrick Lencioni, and most recently, Creativity, Inc. by Ed Catmull. Um... My question is, do you have any advice for the best or maybe a couple different formats or best practices for leading a team through a book together? Thanks for the podcast. It's always included on my podcast recommendations. Well, let me first say that though Rob's question was submitted a couple of weeks ago, I do want to take a moment to just let you know, Rob, that uh, we are praying for you and your community in light of of the recent events over this past weekend in your city. So know that we're thinking about you and praying for everybody in Orlando. Thank you so much for your question. I have been fortunate enough to be a part of a team where we did this together, and it really was what cultivated renewing my love for reading. So I commend you, first of all, for bringing that to the workplace. I don't know this for certain from your question, but I assume you might be having some struggles, maybe um, of a participatory nature, maybe not everybody always comes as fully prepared as you would like, or one or two do most of the talking, or people find a reason not to show up, or, or, or whatever the case might be. I think, first of all, I would consider making it an optional meeting, assuming it's mandatory now, and, and, and ensure yourself that the people who are there are people who truly want to be there. Now, whether or not that's already the case, I would also consider allowing those who attend the opportunity to take turns leading the discussion, whether that's taking turns by book or taking turns by chapter within a book, let's say. Maybe one week you lead the discussion on a particular book or chapter, and then the next week someone else leads the discussion on a particular book or chapter. I don't know if you're discussing one book in its entirety in one meeting or if that's spread out over several meetings, but either way, I think bringing other people in to co-lead with you and take turns doing that would go a long way toward making it more impactful for everybody involved. Certainly, if you do continue leading it yourself from week to week, I would at the very least make sure you come prepared with questions to pose to the group that apply to the most recently assigned reading. And these are questions that you'll want to write out in advance, very specific about the material, rather than just having an idea in your head of some of the things you might want to discuss and sort of winging the discussion. Think about it much like I do an interview with an author. I don't come to this sort of making up questions as I go. I've thought them out in advance. Now, you may be already doing that, but if you're not, I would highly recommend it. Great question, Rob. Thank you for sharing. 
and I hope that helps. Again, to send your question, Jeff at readtoleadpodcast.com or readtoleadpodcast.com slash question. I truly hope you enjoy the Read to Lead podcast. I know I enjoy working on it each and every week. Please consider visiting our sponsor, FreshBooks Cloud Accounting Software, freshbooks.com slash read to lead. That does it for this week. I look forward to seeing you next time for the next episode of the Read to Lead podcast. Thanks so much for listening to the Read to Lead podcast. As a subscriber, we challenge you to be more than just a passive listener. Become a vital member of the community. Visit us on the web at readtoleadpodcast.com. Until next time, remember, leaders read and readers lead. Oh, 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 oh,